beep, beep, beep. The countdown is complete. And we're going to watch a ZVT. And that's it. We're going to, I don't know how to make that song that. Anyways, it's going to be a ZVT. The grand finals are here. You've all, we've been chilling for a while. But they've said, the players have said, you know what? We actually do feel like playing at some time today. And I said, really? Well, that's bloody a relief for me because I wanted to cast the finals. Down here in the bottom left, in the red, representing Infinity Gaming. It's Namshar. And his opponent in the top right, representing Team Liquid. I would call him a big favorite in this match, but we'll see. Can he close it out? It's getting late at night for this young man hailing from Team Liquid. He is, of course, also playing with a ping disadvantage cross server. It's Clem. Just going to be going for that barracks gas opening there. Now, you know what? I wonder if he manually rallies the SCV, or if he only does it if he sees it's going to pop out on the arse of the extractor. The refinery. Don't know. Uh, okay, I was like, why can't I hear their drills? There we go. <clears throat> well, he actually popped on the right side anyway, so don't really matter. Hatch gas pool for Namshar. I'd like to see a standard game here on Eternal Empire to start things off. <clears throat> As much as I love Clem's ability to wear players down, I do think this map's quite big. I think you can do a lot with backstabs. You can do a lot with cutting off their reinforcements. There are many ways to make this game not too bad for you as the player. We'll have to see how it plays out. Um, Gonna crank up the in-game audio a bit, by the way. No one's really been complaining about it, but I figure make it a little louder. It seems to be very soft. So just turn that up a little there. Just, just, a, just a knob. So, of course, this is scouting after the barracks finished. Sees the creep, and the SCV is gonna try and delay that third base. Reaper on the way across the map. Marine coming out after that, factory going down after the second depot, and the second gas geyser will go down in the main. He actually uses the second depot SCV for the gas geyser. Cool little detail to see. And the overlords, both pushing out the right hand side. Nothing out front the base just yet for Namshaw. That queen, of course, about to pop out. Clem can't overstay his welcome, and she will push back that Reaper. Pulling two workers off gas. One remains mining. Oh my god, you daredevil! I thought with four lings there and a queen, there's no way you go in for that snipe. But he goes in and he gets it. And guess what? The third hatch isn't down yet either. Clem here, the mastery of Terran douchebaggery. I'm telling you guys, it's absolutely unfair to play against this guy. He's disgusting. He's even denying it a few extra seconds. Doesn't manage to get any more, but now he goes after the lings. He says, guess what? You're separated from your mama. And uh, that Reaper is going to have to take a few hits, but does get out. Delays the creep spread substantially. Of course, up to four queens very quickly. Actually, Namshar goes up to four queens uh, a lot faster than some Zerg players. Going to be able to replenish that creep very quickly. Two Hellions on their way across the map. This Overlord. It's going to rotate over there and try to just hang out front of the base. We've got Marines there to deny scouting. A Liberator coming out immediately from the starport. And of course, the depot wall starting off. So Clem here, Hellions poke to the front. Reaper bounces into the main. He doesn't want to lose it. And he is going to get it out of there. Well done, Clem. Oh, he's got such a light touch. The way he micros his units, it's like just the right amount of pressure. It's beautiful. Oh, bad move by Namshar. I think he wanted to get the Reaper. Lines up with those Lings, though. Two of them do go down. Already, looking at that unit's lost tab. Five units have gone down for Zerg. Only 75 resources, though. Not sure if that math adds up. Um, like, does that make sense? I guess some of them are like creep tumors and stuff, right? But already here, not even four minutes 30 and eight drones on the third mineral line. Namshar does not, not miss a beat with his macro. Spreading creep on all angles. Now that Liberator is going to go for the natural expand. There's good Overlord coverage, but there's only one Queen nearby. Meanwhile, two Queens here skirmishing with the Hellions. Good micro by Clem. And he's distracting. This is a distraction. It's all about the Liberator. It sieges up on the natural. 
Let's go to Namshar's camera. He's looking at his scouting overlord. He's not paying attention. Oh, he does lose two workers there. But fortunately for him, the Liberator was not actually sieged up in a very good position the first time. So Clem had already unseaged it and moved it forward a little. He keeps unseaging it and resieging. He's trying to bait Namshar into sending his drones back to mining. And he actually does get the queen as well. These two queens out in the middle of no man's land. And this Liberator being an absolute dickhead. He says, ah, oh, did you want to mine here? I'm sorry, are these your minerals? I don't think so. I don't know. You didn't want to mine from here, did you? Namshar says, get the fudge out of my base, you dickhead. Oh, she's going to run through. Good micro by Namshar. Finally going to reject that queen. I'm a big fan of always committing two queens to dealing with a liberator. Because if you make even a small mistake, a single queen just struggles. Um, that being said, the fact that no spore crawlers went down, the fact that Namshar protected... The workers, even though there was a lot of lost mining time, 64 drones, double evo is finished, upgrades are starting. Holy shit, Namshar is good, man. Namshar actually looking quite good after this opening. Now keep in mind, six Hellions, a Liberator, it's not a big commitment. This is not the same as one of those Banshee openings. It's a quick third CC, it's already going out to land. We've got Stim, one, one, shields on the way, the double medevac. So we're gonna have that Marine push following up very soon and we always see this fourth base as the point of contention i'm actually a little surprised um that zergs haven't started taking this base just a bit, have it a little bit further back so i feel like this parade that starts right here sometimes clem just wins the game with this push as namshar though you are on non-stop ling production 17 lings out 22 more in production he's got seven queens he's got the hydra tech on the way but he needs to just overwhelm this with ling bane and those hellions are going to be such a problem. Now, there is no armory. It's just starting now, so no Hellbats will be able to join. There's also only one tank. No second siege tank means this is a lot easier to handle. Ooh, good transfusers go down. The Queen's tanking damage. Bane speed's done. He's going to go for it, but ooh. Man, the tank focus fire is good. He's going to lose that fourth unless he goes right now, and indeed, he does pull the trigger. The Baneling's going to try to run past the tank. The tank gets surrounded. It goes down. Now that the tank's gone, the stims are starting to run out. Namshar says, let's back off. Let you stim yourself to death. I'm not chasing you off creep. I'm not handing you an efficient fight here, mate. Speaking of efficiency, this Liberator, it's the same one from earlier in this game, grabs its 11th drone kill in this game. The Queen pushes it back. It's bruised, but it's still there. At the same time, though, big surround on the front. The Hellions go down. Good engagement there by Namshar, but Clem here. He always ekes out efficiency, even with just small numbers of units. The Hellbat morphs, he picks back up, and he does keep most of these units alive. The fourth base survives, though, for Namshar. If he can get this creep out in front of it, that's huge. He's already got a bit of a creep schlong on the left-hand side of this map that's looking fantastic. This Liberator is just one or two hits away from death right now. What do they do? Eight damage. Nine damage? No armor? No armor on a lib. Yep, that's a one-shot kill on that Liberator. Plus one melee was a bit delayed. Plus two carapace, plus two melee, though. Queuing up immediately. A little behind the Terran in upgrades, but not massively. Fourth command center on the way here for Clem. He's continuing to look for little pickoffs. Grabs the high ground, gets a drone, gets a few active tumors, and does delay that drone over there on the left-hand side of the screen from taking the fifth base. Even snipes a baneling before he leaves because his name's Clem and he likes to micro. If there is a player out there who could have their entire playstyle described as likes to click on heads like literally it's just an fps player who's first person microing every fucking unit it's clem it's like all he wants to do is just attack and and focus fire things that's it he's like i just want to micro i just want to attack 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 micro 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 and it feels like his macro doesn't miss a beat behind it and that's why he's so goddamn scary one more active tumor up here he doesn't catch it oh he does there we go get out get out get out uh oh few marines get caught, but Banelings for three or four marines. Not the best trade there for Namshar. Queens are moving over to the left-hand side. This one, oh no, you don't want to be out there. That creep tumor does need to spread to the high ground. This creep on the right-hand side is getting sick. There is a bit of a gap in it down here. It hasn't been replaced there. But as long as this spreads far enough forwards, I don't think it matters. Namshar is up to 86 workers. His hive's halfway done. Well, I actually think Namshar is in a very good position right now. No! That same chat of a goddamn Liberator. She comes back in. Who wants some freedom? Gets three more drones before going down. And you know what? Disrupts the mining. One worker not being replaced on gas. It's going to have a small impact the longer this game goes. 
Hive is almost finished. Now, do we focus on Ultras? I feel like there's, there's actually double tank production right now. Ooh, that's going to be very good at pushing through Hydras. Now, this is only a small section of the Zerg army. He's coming around with a big flank. I, I really think backstabs are how you beat these pushes from Clem. I think you're well set up to slow him down. I kind of wish he hit the natural. But you know what? That Ling commitment is fine. Just don't go into the Hydras and Banes. Pull those back. The Lings are going to find damage. And that's going to be really good moves for Namshar. It only hits a few Zergans with that Widow Mine. Ten SCVs already falling. He's got Lings in the natural as well. It's going to be a good amount of economic damage. Now, don't get me wrong. You've got three orbitals. You've got a fifth command center on the way. A fourth base landed. It's not game ending damage, but hey, plus one vehicle weapons falls as well. This is good shit here. Ultra Cavern's on the way. Adrenal glands. Namshar. You may have underestimated him saying that Clem was the favorite in this match. Looks like Namshar's really controlling the pace and he finds the tanks. No medevacs nearby. Goodbye, siege tanks. Just like that. Namshar here. Of course, does have that home field, home server advantage. But uh, I think he's just, he's honestly just, just looking great. Clem committed a bit too much on the left-hand side. And I think this is actually the weakness. Yeah, he, he's, I think Clem's realizing he's left this right-hand side alone. He's allowed Namshar to have a relatively simple focus in this game. And this single dropship working the right-hand side, clearing creep, pulling the attention, sometimes cutting around the back line and hitting this fifth mineral line that's now exposed. That is that is the sort of thing I think you've got to do as Clem to force mistakes out of Namshar. Now he's kind of got this semi-aggressive, defensive, weird bio set up in the middle of the map. The problem is it's a mostly marine tank army. He lost a lot of his tanks. And whilst there's a few Liberators building, guys, we've got Ultras. We've got Kindness Plating on the way. He's already queued up Anabolic Synthesis, which of course is the movement speed upgrade for Ultralisks off creep. So it helps the Ultra's ability to attack on creep defensively. Exact same strength, with or without that upgrade, but off creep attacking, they do become a bit scarier. Two Queens getting caught out. That's a big pickoff. I really like that. Oh, one of them does get out there. Oh, that's a lot of Hydraling Bane, but you got to pull back. I don't think you can crash up that ramp. This is just too good a tank position, yeah. I mean, maybe with the Ultras there, you can do it. On the other left-hand side, we've got Bio skirmishing with a pack of Ling Bane. The Ultras are going to run forward and tank. The Ling Bane kind of spreading out and coming in from behind. Of course, these Hydras looking very good as a support unit. Just a small pack of Hydras with a mostly Ling Bane army. That is the way I like to see the Hydras used. Now, the Ling Bane coming in from the left actually wants to flank that and trap it. But most of the Ling Bane does go down. And as always, you can't keep chasing Clem. He will micro his heart out. He will stutter step back and he will find a lot of value. Unfortunately for Clem, he just scans and goes, oh, you're taking, oh no, you're taking eight bases right now. Killing one or two hatches is going to achieve almost nothing. Not just that, he's behind in upgrades. Three threes kicking in in five seconds. Clem here fighting with only a small section of his army. He thought having that high ground would scare Namshar away. It does not. We see the bio microing on the right hand side. That ultra is trying to get on top. It's going to go down. The bio is standing strong on the left hand side, though. The tanks are getting caught out. Back on the right hand side does pick up some of the bio, but a few medevacs sniped by the Hydras. Nice moves here by Namshar. He's got both watchtowers. He's got control of this game. Now, there is a Liberator that's come in, denying a little bit of mining on the 6th, but no impactful damage. He doesn't even have any drones there just yet. The Corruptors have joined in. That's the anti-Medivac, anti-Liberator party. There's almost no air units left for Clem as is, and it looks like here on Eternal Empire, Namshar going to have his way with the Terran. Whoa, the Marine Marauder stuttering into the Baneling Ultra. Namshar turns around, gets a few decent Baneling hits, but loses two Ultralisks for his trouble. And remember that Clem's still almost maxed out. I've seen Clem look dead in games. I'm kind of talking about this like Clem's done. He's still got five bases. And there's a lot of Terrans who I would say they don't really have a chance of coming back from here. But he's going to tie up the upgrades. He's got a Ghost Academy on the way. He's got six Medivacs, 17 Marauders, 22 Marines, six Medivacs. There's only two Ultras on the map right now. They are being rebuilt, which I think is very important. But I'm not sure it'll be enough. The Marauders here looking for the hatch snipe. Ooh, might come back and get it. Does get the hatch on the left. Corruptors take down that medevac. Now, Namshar here. Oh, that's a big Widow Mine. The big Widow Mine, big Widow Mine, big Widow Mine does get about seven Banelings there. The tank gets a few good shots. These other two tanks on the left as well. I mean, Namshar looking to catch Clem out of position, but he's quickly brought the rest of the bio in. 
And I mean, it's not a terrible trade for Namsha, but I don't know if it's good enough either. Oh, once he, he does get in the SCV line, that's all that matters. The moment you get in an unprotected SCV line, the attack has always worked as a Zerg player at this stage. 83 drone economy. Yes, he's going to lose a few Hydras, which are expensive, but 14 SCVs go down. And you know what? I think it's enough. He's going to unzip his fly and we on Clem's command center. Clem says, fuck you, man. He's going to try and float that orbital out of range and does break the caustic spray. Drops mules to repair. And this is what you want to do. For those who don't know, whenever you get P on your building, lift it, break the distance, and then quickly get back to position and land it so they can't use their anti-air attack to finish it off. The Lings are going for that orbital. They're not going to find it. These Corruptors deep in enemy territory. The Lings rallying in Namshot wanted to kill right there, but I think he's got to pull back, make another round of Banelings, and he's got to pivot and swap. Take out these top two bases and then split another run by to hit the natural. I don't think Clem has the resources to defend these bases. I think you'll get at least one and then change angles again and get a run by down the right. Namshot is, uh, is already thinking about it. He's going to clear the Watchtower. He's queued up to do that. And at the same time, pushing down the left-hand side. It's so hard for Clem to be stretched out this far. He's microing his bio like an absolute monster. The Banelings go for the bio. Yeah, ah, Clem accidentally picking up some units. He's stutter-stepping while unloading. What the fuck? How quick is his mouse? Is he got, like, robot hands? Are we going to find out Clem's a robot? <laughs> it's not even that he was unloading. You can just tell it to unload the medevac and then be moving it. But I feel like the Marauders that were unloading were stutter stepping with the army. Maybe they were just still on a control group, but I think he was boxing, clicking, boxing, clicking, boxing, clicking, and A moving at the same time. I don't even know. Maybe I'm getting excited because so much is happening. But Clem here, he's so hard to kill. Namshar feels the heat. He feels the urgency. He knows he's got to do more. He's got to finish this game off. He can't just chill. Clem is getting a lot of bases up. He comes in on this left-hand side. Caustic spray on the planetary. Is that the right move? The ultras go down. Ah, there is ghosts there. A couple of snipes are going to land, but the Banelings find the ghosts. Oh my god, he does manage to crack it. Gets the planetary. Of course, at the same time, for those who didn't uh, know, he actually just got in there with a pack of Zerglings on the left of the natural as well. Um, so it was what we were talking about. Those, those lings on the right-hand side hitting while he went for the left. He cleared the watchtower, pulled back, and then he went in, busted through, and those lings were hitting the rally at the same time. So taking the base out in the top left, hitting the natural. Well done. Good multi-prong there. Great, uh, great moves by the Shar. That was a very good game one, guys. Good start to the series. Squid Cookies in chat says purple gas. Yeah, that's a rich Vespine, guys. It's similar to how there's gold minerals that mine at 40% more efficiency. There is also purple minerals, uh, which is like the same thing. I think it's yeah, it's a couple more gas per trip on it. It's kind of cool. Thank you so much, Ross CD73. Thank you very much for the Twitch Prime sub. Guys, one last shout out for the day. I do want to say a big thank you, everyone. You're, if you're new here, if you're old viewers, if you're regulars or not, I want to say thank you very much. Uh, obviously, we're pretty chill with the commentary today. Lots of dumb jokes, uh, a bit of swearing, all the rest. We are not paid to cover today's broadcast. We are not paid to be professional. We are, we are literally here because there's sick games to cover. It's a weekly cup. Yes, it's part of the big circuit. But it's just a weekly cup. It's one of the very, it's like the lowest level that feeds into the big events that make up EPT. Uh, I do not get paid to do so, but you guys do make it possible. So thank you very much for the huge waves of support. And uh, one quick reminder that if you've ever wanted to literally Robin Hood a billionaire, you can do it right here, right now with that Twitch Prime button. Did you know you can reach your hand into Bezos's pockets, take out a few dollars and hand them to me? I, I'm not saying... I'm a poor medieval English peasant who you're going to give money from the evil sheriff of Nottingham. But I basically am implying it. So if you didn't know, you've got Amazon Prime. You actually get Twitch Prime for free. You get to give out a sub to a streamer of your choice once every month. They get cash dollars in their hand. You get emotes. You get neural infesting neural infestering dirt festers driving hellions around going boom, 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 boom. Um, you get all sorts of other good things. 
Of course, if you guys go above and beyond and click the tier one, tier two, tier three, or uh, sub button, you do get an ad-free experience. Those of you who cheer and, and tip and so on, you know who you are. You guys make this possible. A lot of people watch for free, um, some without ever giving back, some occasionally when they can, when they have the means. But the fact that those of you who are generous and go above and beyond um, and do support regularly by putting your money where your mouth is or money where your eyes are in this case, I really do appreciate it. I want to say a big thanks to every single one of you. So uh, there ends my Twitch, uh, Twitch Prime ambassador kind of uh, sellout section of the stream. Big thanks for everyone for the support. If you're new to the stream, just click the follow button. If you don't have Amazon Prime or you've already used your Twitch Prime sub, please click the follow button. We do this broadcast every week. Normally I have Maynard on shooting the shit with me for this broadcast. Unfortunately, he's got a sore throat, so we couldn't make it today. And um, yeah, it's uh, it, it, it's always sad when he's not here, but at the same time, I'm, I'm very happy to be bringing you guys some sick games. So he'll be back next week and it should be some good fun so thank you very much guys as i say that Otomidas has actually just gifted five subs much love Otomidas. uh anyone else who gives if i don't shout out thank you for for your patience we will shout you out between games but i love you all guys thank you for the support that already smashed us up into a hype train i believe this looks like very standard openings of course down here in the bottom left down a game in this series it is now 4 58 a.m in france if me mathematics is not incorrect it's all right, it's 5 a.m. in France. He's been up all night. He wants to stab some people in the face and he's going to go gas first. Ooh, this is my favorite ZVT opening at the moment. He's going to go really fast Hellions and he might even dive. So a lot of players have been delaying Ling speed. Namshar did not do that last game, but you're going to notice only one guy on gas. So Namshar loves to do this, a lot of players do. Uh, we saw Lambo up against, I can't remember who it was, a very good Terran player in TSL. And I think it was Cure. And I think Cure just was like, oh, you're delaying link speed and just drove his first two Hellions in and killed like eight drones and almost won the game right there. And this is something where you can do that off a barracks gas, but off a gas first, your Hellions are so fast in your opponent's face. It's actually incredible. I love this opening. It's an older opening. We don't see it as much um, because it does delay your kind of Reaper a little bit, your command center a little bit. You know, you're not quite as quickly into a third CC, but by golly, can you hit quick Hellion, quick starport pressure. Two Hellions queuing up at 2 minute 51. So you can actually often dive with four Hellions at about 3.30, 3.40, just after a fast Ling speed kicks in. Guess what? That Ling speed's not going to be done for another, what, 40 seconds. About 3 minutes 48, 3.50 is when Ling speed's going to kick in. Clem might dive in just before that's done. There might still only be four Zerglings at that point. Namshar has not scouted the front. His overlords were looking for attack. proxy barracks, so he has no idea. Unless he noticed that the Reaper was two seconds later than normal, these Hellions could be a big surprise. Let's see. Does he dive with the first two? Does he dive with four? Or does he just tread water and wait for the libs? He's going to dive. He know yeah, like I said, Link Speed's not done. Oh, good block. One of the Hellions gets blocked. That's huge. That's huge. Clem's got to be really annoyed at that. If you have two Hellions, it's much easier to take out these drones. A lovely Evo block from Namshar. Oh, Namshar with the sexy moves. Now, one thing is a lot of players can't really hit their macro perfectly while microing these around the back of the base to waste time. You might be like, oh, is this really worth your APM? Clem has been spending his money pretty much perfectly during all this. Wastes a bit more APM, gets one more drone kill. This is just what we call Clem things. Oh my God, a Hellion died to Zerg Zerglings though. He just lost another Hellion on the front. Oh, this is a good start for Namshar, guys. Now he can chase this Hellion off. Does have to be careful. Oh, pull back, Namshar. Don't go down here. Namshar. No. He's going for the front third. Liberator's coming in. Overlord sees it. There's no queen in the main. Oh, no, Namshar. He's going to get even more warning of it with this Overlord. Come on, Namshar. You've got to react, buddy. Okay, there we go. He will lose just... Oh, he tried to turn it into a spore, but it actually shot a different drone. Sexy moves there from the Shah now. That Liberator doesn't go into the main because it says, well, obviously there'll be a queen there. There wasn't a queen that entire time. So it does miss out. Clem there, assuming there would be a queen in the main when there was not. Behind this, double eBay. Third CC. So it was third CC, second and third barracks, and then the double eBay. This is all spotted by the Overlord. So Namshar knows this is a Ling Bane versus Bio game. And I'm telling you guys, I, I, we're in for a treat. This is always such a lovely thing to watch. Um, where Do you think the fourth base goes here and then the fifth back there? 
I feel like it might present too much of an angle around this cliff. So you might want to take the base in the back. But we'll see what Namshire has in mind. European pros love to expand forward aggressively and really get this creep going. So Namshire, you can see, really trying to push that forward. Double Evo and a Bane Nest behind it. Non-stop drones. And uh, the Hellions are just picking off the creep. So they're actually doing a really good job. You'll notice Clem's done a good job of maintaining their health. They're still all very healthy. So, repaired the Liberator is bringing it back. He's actually so good at doing that, is Clem. So many times he pulls that Liberator home, repairs it, and then continues it. And it is going to be the rich gas base here for Namshar. Bane speed starts up immediately. Even before 1-1 one, one upgrades, Lib's going to come in. Notice that Namshar has not... Oh, yeah, queen down, queen down there. The drone actually blocked the queen for a second, but... Good micro, good micro. So Clem did an alpha move where he tried to just siege on top of her. And no, Namshar's not looking. Oh, no, Namshar. He got distracted by the aliens down here. And now has to lose all the mining time. And this is what I'm talking about. Always send a second queen. Because even a slight mistake like that, where you get distracted, and Liberty's going to do more damage. So Namshar, I mean, massive admiration of his macro, but I, I do wish he'd always send a second Liberator. That being said, the fact that he skips spores completely in these games and gets away with it, just a single spore there, I think this is really giving him a big economic boost. If you build those spore crawlers early, it costs a lot of money. Oh, a nice Ling run by, but the Hellions are there to greet it. So he's not really going to find too much damage. Just gets one Hellion and an SCV, gets out of there. And we've got two tanks, a pack of Marines and four Medivacs. Ling Bane is here. Namshar, I was talking about this angle and why I don't like that fourth base. This is it. This is a freaking horrendous angle to defend. Look at those tanks. You can't fight that. I mean, these players, they're, they're so obsessed with this rich gas geyser. I'm, I'm not a fan. Can he break it? I really don't think he has a chance of breaking it. Bane Speed comes in. The Marines wriggling out of that surround. Gets rid of one tank, but he's got to kill both. The Banes are all gone. This was an amazing trade for Clem. And I do think Namshar taking this base was a bit too cocky. I, I used to love this as a fourth base, and I realized very quickly that it presented just such a good angle for the Terran. Clem taking advantage. And uh, he's going to shut this down, man. The Hellions even join up now. They realize there's no more run buyers. The Warloff finished on the third. And at that moment, Clem said, hey, I can bring my Hellbats to the front. This is a dead fourth base. Namshar is going to go for it. But those Banelings are massively clumped up. Big tank shots on him. The hatch, massively weak right now. Bane's coming forward. They want to snipe it. They want to snipe. The Marines get off creep. Oh, he's got to do a bit of a spready. A few Banes do connect there. I don't think it's enough, though. A Ling run by runs in. It's desperate. It's looking for damage. The problem is he's lost all of his queens at home and his fourth base. He's, he's so desperately trying to hang on to the fourth. He knows if he loses that, he's behind economically. But even the SCVs, the Marine pool, yeah, seven workers went down. It's still going to be a much better situation for the Terran player. He's trying to rebuild his fourth in the back, the base, which I would have preferred earlier. He's not going to get it. GG's. High quality graphics stream, says Moggs. Thank you very much. Uh, if you guys are in Australia or New Zealand, you'd like to win an awesome Radeon 5600 XT graphics card to try and have graphics that are almost half as sexy as mine. There's a link in chat there to the Twitter, exclamation mark giveaway. If you type that in chat, my bot will post it again since there is a two minute delay. Uh, Australian and New Zealand residents only, unfortunately. Postage is a bitch from Australia, guys. It's like hundreds of dollars to send a graphics card to America or, or Europe. Apologies for that, but if you are Aussie or New Zealand, uh, AMD is getting us to do another giveaway, which is awesome. Really happy about that. Uh, Snowbased with a 17-month uh, resub. Defense Straighter with the Twitch Prime. DJ, DJ Saint Ryujin with the Twitch Prime. Frightening Viking. Blisse. Album Tomato and Vulture G5. All brand new first-time Twitch Prime subscribers. Thank you very much for the support, guys. This is an action-packed awesome grand finals. I want to say a big thanks for that wave of support. Welcome to the pigsty. Don't forget, you guys will get avatars on one of our normal streams. We don't have avatars today because we are casting and uh, normally you get little avatars between games running around here that we fight each other with and stuff. Um, we don't spend a lot of time on it, but it's a nice little perk as well as, of course, all those emotes. Got a few new ones. We do have the spine crawler, um, which kind of pairs up with town quite nicely, you know? Static defense town. You know what I'm saying? Uh, don't go anywhere, guys. We are hopping into map three. The series is tied up 1-1 one, one apiece. 
Come on, map a piece. All right, all right, all right. Let's go. Up here in the top left hand side, a bit too ambitious with that fourth base location there on Everdream. This map here is actually even harder to secure a fourth base. I would say a much harder map. In the red, representing Infinity Gaming, it's Namshar. Down here in the bottom right, I really like the mix up with the gas first. I do think uh, if that second Hellion didn't get blocked by the slow Zerglings, it would have been a very different opening. I think that can all be traced as well. Who knows, maybe even back to the ping. I think he probably would have microed around the Zergling better if he wasn't playing with that bit of latency from Europe to the US Central server. But nonetheless, I love to see the diversity. He has a lot of different build orders. Clem has so many builds and it feels like he never repeats them in a series um, of TVT or TVP. That being said, as I said, I'm like, actually in TVZ, he does just go Hellion Banshee, most generic play a lot. He does do that a lot. <laughs> Anyways, down here at the bottom right in the Team Liquid, in the Team Liquid, in the blue representing Team Liquid, it is Clem. Clem. Hey, Kugel's Tiger, thanks for the 30 month resub. Holy shit, two and a half years, dude. Two and a half years of Kugel's Tiger. Can you think, if I go back three years, people will be like, what's a Kugelsteig? I'd be like, I don't know. That's just a nonsense word. But now people say, you want to go Kugelsteiging? I go, I want to go Kugelsteiging, man. There was nothing I would love more than Kugelsteiging. So thank you for being part of the pigsty, part of the pig family here. And and really adding some nice flavor to that Twitch chat. Uh, yeah, Namshar beat Sola to get here, guys. I, I was underselling this match, saying Clem would bop Namshar. Yeah, the last map pretty decisive from Clem, despite the start not being amazing. But Namshar overall, I mean, he's looking pretty tight today, guys. So very excited to see what he can do. Of course, that Reaper is going to come across nice and fast off the barracks gas. And we are going to see that factory go down with the Depot SCV. Now, you might be like, oh, doesn't that delay it a few seconds? You want to swap it onto the reactor anyway. Factory and the reactor take almost identical times to build. So you can see a factory takes 43 seconds. A reactor takes 36. So it actually times out perfectly. By the time this lifts off, and it'll it'll kind of be ready to land just after the barracks lifts off anyway. Often they just lift at the same time. Times out very nicely. The Reaper, of course, going to do the Reaper dance. He's looking for the tax. He says, hey, have you paid your tax, dickhead? The Reaper runs in, gets a Zergling. Not a bad start. Now, can he get a Creep Tumor? He's already deep in the orange, so I think Namshar should have an easy time of defending this Tumor. Yeah. Couldn't risk going any further forward, or he would have lost the Reaper. Not worth it for a single Tumor. Holy crap balls. What the hedge is that? What the hedge? What? I don't even know. I think some wires just got crossed in my brain. I've never said what the hedge before. I don't even know what that means. Um, I think I need an interpreter for myself sometimes. Third CC, very early. So it's going to be a parade of goddamn doom. Comes in, looks for the tumor. Does not quite get it. Still just one Zergling kill on that Reaper. Um... Namshar is so defensive. If he doesn't get wind of this, like, I think this is the perfect build for this moment in the series. I talked about how he does sometimes just do the same thing every game. I love this changeup. Namshar is so defensive. He's played so standard. You've done Hellion Lib. You've done even faster Hellion Lib in the second game. Peel it back a little bit. Just go Hellion Banshee with a ridiculously fast third CC. The Banshees are more a bit of insurance, a bit of creep clearing. You don't really need to do big damage with them. You just need to not lose the Banshees. They are what keeps you safe in this opening. And you are just going to explode with this third orbital. Triple mules dropping. Triple SCVs. There's going to be double upgrades coming in really early in the game. And uh, I'm trying to do their best. Now you're going to notice a little dance there. The Reaper shuffles in front of the Hellions. Because the Reaper can regenerate. When he's out of combat, he has these uh, combat drugs. So he's going to inject. And you're going to see his hit points start to go up in a moment. There we go. You see he turns green there. And his hit points do start to climb. The Hellions, of course, need to go back to repair. So you always want the Reaper to kind of tank in between these little mini skirmishes. Namshar does want to see what's going on. And with just one Marine. Ooh, looks like he got one drone. Good little dive there from Clem. But uh, I think that Overlord should... Yeah, it sees the third command center. So Namshar knows what he's up against. Uh, the thing is, he's kind of already, like just along his normal build. There aren't really any corners to cut. I guess he doesn't get need a 7th need a queen. So he cuts queen production. Um, obviously taking a 4th back there is actually going to be nice and safe. The, the real point of contestation is this 3rd. 
and lovely tank position. Lovely tank positions all around here. Tank position, if you get a tank there, if the Terran gets far enough forward, tank there. Like, there are just some brutal areas around this high ground, which is what's... Honestly, I look at this map at the moment, and I say, Zergs, stop vetoing whatever you're vetoing and start vetoing Nightshade. Now, I'd love Namshar to change my mind, but I feel like the last six or seven Zerg vs. Terran games on this map, the Terran has won, and it's all been based around pushing that area. We'll see how it goes in this game. Still a few minutes until that bio tank book push uh, actualizes this is eight hellions by the way that's a, a lot of hellions that got committed to this game and you can see namshar's kind of really respecting it he's like whoa let's just chill on 55 drones he's not really droning as hard as he normally does and these banshees clearing creep they're trying to set up for that push we were talking about the hellions and banshees by the looks of it don't want to overcommit. they just want to force that response now that spore just barely out of range but banshees come a bit far forward hellions with a wraparound though oh no Oh, the Hellions get some good shots, but I think that's a great trade for Namsha. A Banshee goes down, the Hellions and the Reaper go down. Oh, that's a disaster. Clem just lost all map control. Has he slowed down the creep? Yes. Has he got Medivacs on the way when they're out? He can start pushing, yes. But you know what? If Namsha hits these creep spreads, he can get his creep up here by the time that push gets here. And if he just non-stop builds units, he can get forward to intercept it. He's going straight infestation pit, so he wants to go hive into ultras. He's going to skip hydras, skip muters. It's pure Ling Bane. He's going to go for this fourth up here, but he's taking a fifth as well. So in case one of them dies, he can always transition workers. And that's kind of nice. Even if this hatch dies, he can move the workers up here. The Terran will have to get very deep to really push you off this map. Holy crap, base trade just raided us? Why? Oh no. Did they not get Mapu in the lobby? Oh no. Is that what happened? Did they not get base trade in the lobby? Why is he raiding us up? Thanks for the raid, guys. Much love. The push is actualizing. The Marines come forward. Cutting a hole in that creep. The Queens do want to respread it a little. Ling backstab's gonna hit the third. More marine tank coming out. Now the Banshee here, very important. It will eventually deal with an unlimited number of Zerglings. But you know what? Oh, they're going to find an opening. Oh, get the tank. Oh no, Namshar. Namshar was a little bit afraid. He could have actually got the tank and those marines there. Ah, oh, well. Behind this, Namshar's hive is almost done. <clears throat> now he's not droning at all. You're going to notice Namshar's playing very heavy on the units. Is that a mistake? I actually think he defended the Hellion Banshee so well, he could have squeezed out seven more workers. Now, players tend to play very low on drones on this map because they know this push is so scary, but if they can ever completely clear and reset the tank count, they will be okay. And Namshar's setting up. He wants to go. Ling Bane coming in. A lot of Zerglings. They've got to get on the tanks. Only one Zergling gets on that tank on the right-hand side, but there we go. He gets the wraparound. He gets the wraparound. And you know what? This Terran army is about to get jerked by those Banelings. A full-on reach around coming in from two sides. A wraparound, I mean. Wraparound. The SCVs. Their Banelings in the mineral line. Oh, man. 14 SCVs go down. There's a bunch of Marines in that medevac. And a good pullback here by Namshar. Gets the damage. Oh, did he just drop mules to block those SCVs? He did! Clem is an absolute legend. That was a mule force field. He saw the lings were going to escape, so he dropped four mules, blocked them, killed them, and then sent the mules to mine. They only lost, like, one trip from that. That was sick. He's going to try and go for the throat. Clem realizes that he's down in the economy. He wants to find some damage, but I think he's overstepped. Namshar's macro is too good. He thought he'd find a bit of a bigger window with no banelings ready. Instead, Namshar shuts it down and he's respreading creep. It's spreading on all angles. Banshee comes around the top side. A lovely maneuver there. Namshar does pull back. Three drones going down. The queen there. The spore's going to move into the middle of the mineral line. That Banshee rotates up into the main. Now, we are actually rebuilding SCVs. Clem realizes he can't win with an all-in, but he sees an ultra cavern finishing. And with that, Clem's little heart sinks. He goes... My heart was already filled with salt, you know? It was already one of the most uh, floaty things in the world. My Terran heart of hearts. But seeing an Ultra Cavern finished, I feel a deep sadness, sadness permeate my bit being. He starts writing poetry and shit. He's like, ah, oh, man. Let's be real, he has a fourth. He's up in supply, guys. Namshar took a bunch of amazing fights. He's, he's done really well. I know he's still down 900 resources, but he's done really well. 
The problem is he just hit 80 drones. He's actually been down on economy. So even killing the workers on the third, that was off a 67 drone Namshar. This was not the 80-85 drone Zerg that now is maxed out and has unlimited units. How many Banelings have we got on the map? 22. So he's got a lot of Banelings. So the army supply does lie a little bit. If there's no Banelings, it's just Zerglings, this is terrible. But down 30 army supply with 20 Banes with Ultras on the way. Kindness pleading, pleading about to kick in. No real counter to the Ultras ready. Just two Liberators, 40 Marines, a few tanks. This looks good for Namshar. Tech-wise, creep-wise, map control-wise, he's got control. So there's a lot of things to look at in StarCraft, guys. Don't just look at the supply. Right now, I still favor Namshar in this situation. He's got plus three carapace, matching the plus three weapons of the Terran. Bit of Liberator Harass going to start to work its way around this map. The Spore Crawl is repositioning. Uh, Should have been up there, though. That Lib's going to cause trouble. And this buys time. Namshar is kind of trying to deal with this. Spore and the Queen take out that one. But going to take drone losses on the left-hand side. He's distracted. Namshar, you got to react on the left-hand side. Loses a lot of drones there. Five workers going down. Moves the Spore Crawler. But look at this big hole in the creep. A dent in the middle of the map. And you can see Clem setting up his spread. He actually doesn't have that many units here. I don't know where his army supply is. I guess it's rallying across the map. It's spread across a few screens right now. The Liberator down here being what we call a massive douche. And does get a few more workers. Nicely done. Big disruptions here to Namshar's economy. Namshar's like, man, I want to I run by. I want to get you. But the tank behind the depot wall, there's no way you're getting in there in Amshar. Does catch a bit of the bio, but ooh, he's got to be careful with this fight. Coming in from both sides. And he's going to try and get on top of these tanks. Does get rid of most of them. The Ultra is really putting in the work. And now it's just Marines versus Ultraling Bane. The Marines gutting down the Banes. That was a kill zone right there. Tank, 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 and a concave of bio. Namshar has to pull back and lick his wounds. He's trying to rebuild those workers he lost. He says, what, wasn't I at 80 drones? Oh, god damn, the Liberator. He's taking too much damage. This third base, or fourth down here, sorry, it was a planetary, and Clem expanding down the bottom, making more planetaries, making more expands. You know, I thought it was great for Namshar, but I think those two Liberators was crucial. It's put Clem back in the driver's seat. If he can hold on to this position, he should win the game, but I think Namshar has enough to dislodge him. He is going to clear the tanks, push the bio back. Namshar needed that hold. Of course, he's starting Corruptors. He does have a Spire up behind this. He's going to go deep on this. The Ultra uh, up in the top side. So he gets a tank there. He's not quite finding that tank kill. Gets a few SCVs, but whenever you go deep on the production like that, you take a lot of damage. And this Liberator just picking off Zerglings as they run through. Oh, a drop in the north. Goes for the base snipe. Not quite able to find it. But look at this. Clem is relentless. He says, I've still got this Liberator you haven't dealt with. I'm just going to stim forward even a few Marauders. Thankfully, Queen's not armored units. They don't really take a lot of damage from Marauders. Marauders, of course, do about double their normal damage versus armored units like the Ultras. But uh, the Ultras, the Lings, the Queen's coming forward. The drop in the main gets cleaned up. Most of the Marines go down. The Spore and the Queen here are going to try to hang on. I mean, Clem's just trying to make magic happen with even small numbers of units. And he really is wearing Namshar down because what is he doing? He's trading well and he's got a fifth morphed into a planetary behind it. He's got a Liberator on the top base. It feels like Clem is just everywhere. He's never afraid. That's the problem. Other Terrans, when they extend this much on the map, the Zerg counterattack catches them, gets them, gets on their production. It feels like Clem's ability to scramble and just throw a defense together with whatever he's got lying around, it's much higher level than most Terran players out there. And because of that, I mean, we've seen Namshar counterattack and just whatever couple of tanks and bio can scramble together are amazingly useful. This Liberator finally goes down. Creep tumors being respread. Namshar has been on point with trying to respread his tumors. The Banshee, guess what? The Lib made that spore reposition. If this Banshee moves up, it can actually kill quite a few drones, but there's a lot going on on the map right now. Ling's there, get engaged. The Banshee goes down. And the problem here, earlier it's Ken Terran cover their expansions. But as you get to this point on Nightshade, it's too small a map. Where is the Zerg going to expand to? Every expansion is going to be in reach of Terran. You want to really make some plays right now as Clem. He's going to go in with Zerglings. The Banes do kind of find the bio. The Lings kind of find the mineral line. At the same time, he hits the left-hand side. The Banes massively find the mineral line. But the Libs and Tanks wreck his Ultras. The Planetary holds. He's got Lings into the natural. He needs more damage here. The army of Clem is very large. It's also in charge. He's large, he's in charge, he's rearing, ready to go. He stamps his foot and his nostrils flare because Clem's got a big Terran army 
And as much as this is economic damage, he's still got a fifth. He's still got a fourth. And right now he is an angry Rhinoceros Terran. And, and this is the point where you know he's getting ready to counterattack. Not just yet, but one more series of engagements like that where Namshar trades army to damage the economy. As long as Clem doesn't throw a big chunk of his army away for free, his army supply is just going to get out of control. And right now we've got a Namshot who just cannot max out. He doesn't have any bank. He's down in supply. He's massively down in army supply, being down about 20 or 30 the entire time. Clem's ready to push. Liberate on the left-hand side does get intercepted by the Corruptors. Good handling of that. There is a Liberate on the top right that might cause trouble. A big Ling Bane run by here for Namshar. He's banking on that, doing damage. There's nothing at home. He cleared all the tanks out. He gets those Widow Mines. Lovely micro by Namshar. He's trying to buy time over here, but the Bio is wearing down his main army. Ling's here on top of the rally. They're looking for the damage. The skirmish at the front has subsided. The Widow Mines, though, clear out the Lings at the same time. Just a few Lings on this third. Do they have Adrenal? They do. It's Adrenal 3-3 three, three upgrades on both sides. More economic damage being done to Clem, but a lot of units going down in trade for it. And Namshar, he's got to bust through these tanks. That Lib up there no longer taking part in this fight. It looks like Namshar's routing the Terran, but there's still a lot of Bio and Medivacs alive. A lot of renewability. If he can get some of those Corruptors, that would be huge. That Liberator trying to buy time. This Liberator in the top right got two kills. It's denying mining. Namshar's economy is only 72 workers. Clem scans and says, okay, you don't have any bases in the bottom left. How is he still running forward? It's because he knows there's no anti-air. Man, this is the point where just one or two infestors could put a little bit more fear into Clem. Slow down that rhythm uh, of attack, attack, attack that Clem seems to love so much. We've got nine more workers rebuilding. Namshar's economy is bruised. It's battered. Yes, he hits the economy of Clem well, but Clem just drops another round of mules, rebuilds his SCVs every time they go down, and it really does feel like Clem is the one who's had the better economy for much of this game. Uh, obviously, 5,000 resources lost looks bad. I'll tell you what, I'm used to seeing Clem 10,000 resources ahead by this point. Like... His fights are often disgusting, but Namshar's been very good at catching him unawares. Ooh, I don't know about this one. Not enough Banelings to kill the planetary, so he's got to pull back. Another Liberator just YOLOs in. The Corrupt is nowhere to be found, and there's so much going on right now. Every time Namshar doesn't realize for a few extra seconds, it's such a pain. And whilst he's building a really sick work account right now, guess what? This Widow Mine is just 19 kills, never being cleared up. The Liberators... Just going to go hide in the corner. He says, catch me if you can, you dickhead. A bunch of bumbling Tom Hanks detective corruptors come down. They're like, oh, you're committing drone fraud. That's bad. Mm, doom, 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 doom. Uh, but okay, looks like the movie's going to end. I do think that'll catch him out. Uh, right hand side, Lings do find themselves unable to take the engage. And there we go. Does end up getting caught, that Liberator. This Widow Mine is up to 20 kills right now. It finally goes down, but a Baneling blows itself up on it. So not too bad there. Clem's going to take out the top right. As I said, Namshar's running out of places he can actually defend. And oh god, the Widow Mines. The Widow Mines are getting some amazing hits on these Zerglings. So an incredible trade of mines against Zerglings. But that's a dead planetary. Now an Ultra or two might go down here. The bio is stimming itself so much. I like the choice for Namshar to pull back. But I think when that stim runs out, I would actually go back in. That was an accident with the Banelings, a miss rally. Uh, he told them to go north and they changed paths saying that was the fastest route through the Terran bio. Losing that base is an absolute disaster. Now Clem also is struggling to grab the edges, right? They're both running out of minerals. Income tab is going to become more and more important. Losing that base is a disaster. Namshar's income will be dropping, but he's still got that one. Still got a few patches there. A few patches here. He runs in on top of this third base. Sorry, a little bit slow. I didn't think he was going to commit to that. Most of Clem's army is down to the left of this. He is not in position right now. Oh my lord. The Corrupt is even taking out a few medevacs. He's got to get those out of there. A few Lings running on the left-hand side. They do take out one or two siege tanks. The Corrupt is going to go for the medevacs. Ooh, I'd love to see a few medevac snipes here. Clem is broke. Both players are so low on money. Just keep in mind, he can't be too wasteful. That is Namshar. I think he might be getting a little over eager. you got to remember, yeah, losing that base sucks. But Clem also lost his base. And I mean, he's got some mineral patches, but you're, both of your incomes suck. That's it. We can see the income tab there. I'll stop selecting units so you guys can keep an eye on that. While it's going here, we've also got units lost right next to it. 40,000 to 32,000. <coughs> and yes, Namshar's at 1,000 APM right now. Someone's queuing up Zerglings, I guess. Rapid fire. 
Uh, spreading creep as well, of course, with that rapid fire. Namshar is spamming like a mother trucker right now, but his creep has really been pushed back. That's one of the things that gives a Zerg longevity. Respreading of the creep is massive. Oh, Ultra goes down. That's costly, man. Ultras are not cheap, dude. This is a weird position right now. This is so weird. I mean, I, I never see Nightshade get to this point. Clem has got 143 army supply. Normally, that means you're dead as Zerg. But what is it? It's just Bio Mine with two siege tanks. Bio Mine is good. Is it good enough to take on this army, though? Clem spreading across three screens, trying to take the best fight he can. The Corruptors are really what adds the efficiency here, though. If you didn't have the Corruptors, I feel like Clem could wear him down with pure bio. But the Corruptors keep killing the Metavax, taking away the healing, taking away the ability to reposition. This attempted base is going to go down for Clem, especially if he wheeze on it. Those Widow Mines are going to get a few shots, but Ultra is a tanky, boys. Not going to worry about that. He does have to save this base, and it looks like he will be able to... Oh, the Marines stim up. Clem saves the command center. Nicely done there by Clem. And he's going to drop into the natural, the single mineral patch. He's like, no minerals for you. Takes that one out. At this point, I don't think you rebuild any workers that you lose from now on as Napshaw. Uh, you're never going to secure a new base. It's just not possible. It's just about hanging on to what you've got and trying desperately to make this happen. Oh, no, no, no. 26 drones stacked on a mineral line. 26 drones. Namshar, not like this. Oh, no. No, no, no. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. If we could get an F in the chat for the drones. They had families, man. Oh, Zerg players out there. Oh, I mean, let those tears flow. That was a very upsetting thing to watch as a Zerg fan and a Namshar fan. But I'll tell you, I bet Clem's a bit excited right now. That being said, does it matter losing that many drones? Not really. You don't have that many mineral patches left to mine from. It's make or break right now. Namshark cannot let Clem establish this base. He's going to try to get in, but look at this positioning and these layers of Widow Mines. The bio stuttering backwards. The medevacs are getting whittled down by the Corruptors, but I think Namshark, he's, he's lost most of his Ling Bane. Is it enough? Oh, those Lings on the backside actually really taking a good fight. I like this. If he can get the command center, that's going to be it. He's trying to lure Clem up onto the high ground. Every every stim that Clem uses, remember, he doesn't... He's got eight medevacs, but they are bruised. They're getting low on energy. He's trying to lift and, and raise this command center. Clem, I mean, he's a young man. He has no issues getting it up. The problem is the Corruptors do take it down very quickly once it flies up into the air. And uh, this army is going to need to now make it happen, I guess, here for Clem. He's down to just that bottom left base mining. Yes, he's got income. I mean, he scans and he knows Namshar's not mining that much either, but... There's no complexity to this army. There's no liberators to deal with the ultras. It's just bio, mine. And it's a good composition. You can make it go a long way, but the Zerg for one of the first times in this game is ahead in army supply. Namshar with some brilliant ultra Ling Bane engagements throughout this game. And I, I, I take back anything I ever say about Clem just being someone who might just trounce Namshar. I, I'm sorry, Namshar. You deserve a lot more respect from me. I honestly feel like there's almost, before this match, very few Zergs who could actually match Clem in a macro ZVT, but right now Namshar's making it happen. Hey, nice pickup. If they can get that kill, they cannot. The Widowmine gets his revenge. Uh, yeah, okay, so Namshar's going to try to take the, the top right. Clem's going to try to take the bottom left, and this kind of like pushes Namshar into taking sloppy engagements, right? Clem was trying to unburrow that Widow Mine to stop it firing. Didn't get it in time. Did end up taking a shot. Just got a few Zerglings. And I like this choice from Namshar. Don't keep attacking off creep into these pre-setup sieges. Just give up the hatch. You take the top right. Hit the production. If the Terran loses his production, he's usually toast. Lings are going to run in here. A ballsy maneuver from Namshar. Presenting some big targets for the Widow Mines. The Corruptors do take out a few of the Medivacs. But oh no, the Corruptors are getting gunned down. The Corruptors are all getting gunned down. Namshar focused on the front. He just lost every Corruptor. He's only got two left. Now, whilst the Ultra Ling Bane is on top of the production, and that's nice, you've got to be careful because now you're up in the production. And this is the Terran's wheelhouse. If he can come back and fight you on this ramp and spread out and so on, you can get trapped. So I like that he sent most of the units back. Uh, shame there's no burrow to burrow Banelings on these ramps. He's going to rotate to the left-hand side with these Ultras. Um, oh, they... The luckiest tank in the world does end up go, going down there. 
And uh, do we have any Overseers right now? There's three Overseers on the map. One's in the main. Uh, a drop into the main to try and defend and keep some of this production alive. Lings find the bottom left base. There's a ton of Marauders there. I mean, that command center losing all the SCVs in the bottom left is a disaster. The last Ultra finally cleared up, but the production is being ransacked. You can only build three Marauders in a Marine at a time now with this production of Clems. And if he can finish off that base, it'll be huge. The top right base, Clem scans it. He knows about it. He's going to send a single Widow Mine to try and harass that. Meanwhile, trying to defend both your natural production and this bottom left base, it seems like an impossible task. And even though Namshar is super broke right now, it feels like this Ultra Army is so scary. Is it enough? I don't know, guys. This is actually insane. Oh, no. That Widow Mine. Okay, only two. Good spready there from Namshar. Does end up defending that. And uh, the Queen and the Corrupt are trying to get rid of that medevac. Every unit is so goddamn valuable right now. The income's so low on both sides. Namsha continue to keep a very small gap in the unit's lost tab. Terran, normally the more efficient race, unable to keep that going in. And this orbital still looks bare naked. There are mules dropping. It's fully saturated. It's the last SCVs that Clem has. He's not even going to try to attack this base. He's just going to keep harassing it. Widow Mind Drop takes out nine workers. He can always just send some of those workers back down there to mine since he has some of them long distance mining trying to take this other hatch. Namshar looks like at this point he's decided to defend this base and this base and that's how I'm going to win this game. Um, I, oh man. I mean the mules, the mules are going to pay off big at this moment guys. 39 drones is not a lot to go head to head with triple orbital. How many orbitals we got? One, two, three, four, four orbitals. That's a lot of money. Four orbitals makes up for this economic difference in the workers. I feel like Namshar needs to hit the production again. He, I, I think this is an awkward situation where I keep thinking Namshar's got it in the bag. And Clem... Clem is actually... I think he's feline, man. I think Clem's parents might actually be a fucking lion and a tiger. Because not only is he fierce <laughs> and he's the king of the Terran jungle... He also seems to have nine lives. I feel like he should be dead. You know? Like, just think about this from Namshar's point of view. Think about every good fight you've taken. The number of times you've breached his mineral lines, breached his production. He just does not die. He's got one of the stiffest jaws, the strongest jaws, I should say, out of any Terran player. Can take a good, strong punch on the chin and still just get right back up. Shake it off and keep fighting. I like that he's rebuilt the Corruptor Squad. Like I said, that's one of the most important ways of gaining value. Now, run drones! Not a bad Widow Mine hit, but... Losing the Medevac in the Mines, not what you were looking for. And 56 drones in Namshar. He's turned this part of the map into his own. He's respread creep a little bit on this bottom and middle. And SCVs are being rebuilt. You're fucking kidding me. They're going to reset. They're both doing that EU thing. This is the point where a Korean player, one of them would YOLO, right? Be like, no, I'm going to kill you. But they're both like, nah, these are my three Zerg bases. He's like, okay, these are my three Terran bases. <laughs> so the Zerg main base has moved from the top left to the top right. The Terran main base has moved from the bottom right to the bottom left. What am I even watching right now? And how is this? <laughs> they're like, it's fine. And he's going to, oh, great Aspire. Goodbye, Widow Mines. He's not, I mean, it's, it's, it's still, it's still a, a real scrappy shitty economy right this is like some junker terran economy here oh he finds the mineral line the lings find it oh banelings get the workers there corrupt is pushing him off the top right as well i'd love to see an ultra flank come down from this angle and if you get three or four ultras from this angle sandwiching i think that that bio just disappears so i think this is a very dangerous situation for clem he's on 150 army supply right now Takes out an Ultra. A few Queens with high energy go down. Oh, he's machine gunning Transfuse. Good wraparounds with some of the Lings. Pull back on the Lings on the left. Evades a nasty Widow Mine hit. Uh, I mean, he's trying to buy time for those Broodlords right now. Uh, there's 31 Marauders on the map. What the fuck? Oh my god. But the Lings there did a great job. They pulled Widow Mine shots onto the Marauders. Most of the Lings are gone though. So even though the supply looks so good for Zerg, remember those Marauders can like two-shot these Ultras and he's got to make, he's getting scanned. He wants to make Broodlords so friggin' bad, but he just can't. 
He's like, I don't have the money. I've got to just make units that are ready right here, right now. And it's Ling Bane Ultra is the order of the day. It's the standing order. He's going to try to make two broods. They can start picking away from afar. Because, I mean, this is definitely getting nasty. But there's not that many medevacs. A few marauders go down. Ooh, still has not taken this base on the left. And there's not many minerals left there anyway. Since Namshar mined that out so early in this map. And Ultralist does get focused down. A few marauders falling. It's Broodlord time, guys. The first two broods are about to finish. Another two morphing. And guess what? Suddenly, these Widow Mines coming forward like this. Ooh, that's a good one. Ah, Ultra splits off. Good micro by the Shah. And look at this. The Broodlords, man. Ah, the Broodlords. The Broodlords. He's trying to micro his Widow Mines on top of the Broods, but the Banelings end up hitting them. They don't really get the big hits they wanted. I want to see these Ultras pull back one more time, but you know what? Ah, uh, Namshar knows a lot better than me. Continues to commit. Now pull back. Yeah, there's the pullback. He's still got four Broodlords backing this up. He's up 60 supply. He's up in army supply. The Broodlord swip. Swip. The Broodlord switch. The Broodlord swap. A brilliant decision here. Under the gun. And uh, honestly, this is amazing. Thank you for this beautiful gift, Clem and Namshar. I am starving. I've missed my meeting. My, my hangout sesh. I thought this tournament would end at 1 o'clock an hour and 40 minutes ago. We've got at least one more game after this one, guys. At least. Holy shit. <laughs> I'm at a loss for words. Whoa, Lings just got gunned down there. These Lings continuing to backstab. The Broodlord's looking healthy, looking good. And I love it. He's like, you know what I really need to finish this game? Pathogen glands and festas. I think Infestors are one of the greatest thing ever, but because Namshaw has been managing so many units in so many places and doing a lot of complicated micro versus the Widow Mines, I really think he hasn't had the APM or like the, the mechanical bandwidth. It's not even the mental bandwidth, it's like the mechanical bandwidth to use Infestors very well while doing everything else he's been doing. But now, Infestors are out, you're slowing the game down with the Broodlord, sorry. You want to add Infestors to support that. And that's going to be an amazing move. Clem's going to go and try to mine out the 40 minerals on this mineral patch and a few others. Uh, a little Widow Mine drop comes in. Good Widow Mine drops, man. So it's just Bio Mine, a few Vikings being added. Doesn't look good for Clem, does it? The Broodlords are going to start to push forward. We've got a few Infestors that are popping out and coming over here. Plus one Flyer Attacks, or in fact, plus two has been done for a while. Plus one Armor's on the way now. What a game. The Widow Mines are going to try to run forward and flank the Broodlords, which is honestly the funniest shit I've ever seen. Just watching Widow Mines just walk towards Broodlords like, get them, boys. Get them. Get the flying mustaches that throw their children like weapons. Oh, good little fungal. Couple of Widow Mines do go down. Vikings come forward. Marines stim. Two Broodlords fall, but look out for the fungal. Clem runs away like, oh shit, man. That bio was very clumped. If he gets fungalude, then he gets flushed down the, the, the plumbing of this game. Uh, honestly, this army looks unbreakable. Six ultras, 18 banes, eight corruptors, five infestors. He's going to run forward. He wants to try to snag those infestors if he can. The infestors run forward. Big fungal on the left. Gets a decent one on the right as well. The ultraling bane runs forward. And that is it. Namshar, finally, 34 minutes and 18 seconds into that game, seals the deal. How? How? I don't know. Two minute bathroom, says Clem. All right, we're both peeing. We'll be right back. So Clem had to go to a bathroom break, so we turned on a little just series of clips. Namshar is elected to not join the lobby, so I think Namshar has got the runs after that game. He says, oh god, I'm winning 2-1 in this grand finals, but it just won't end. I was expecting the finals to finish two hours ago. I am bloody starving. I should have squeezed a lunch break in between one of the series. I'm going to eat a Tim Tam. It's actually not a Tim Tam. It's the Aldi. It's the Aldi version. 
looks really lame. Just divine. You're like, what kind of a lame name for a biscuit is that? It, it, it's really good. Hmm. I haven't had lunch. We're getting into it, guys. This could be the last game. Oh my god. Let's go! Oh, damn. Um, over here in the left-hand side, guys, let's get into game four. Representing Team Liquid, it is Clem. Going to be going for the Barracks first opening, the more standard one. Over here in the right-hand side, in the red, the Zerg player, it's Infinity Gaming's Namshar. The Shar. Thank you very much for the support, guys. Uh, Gom Tengu with the Twitch Prime sub. International Racer with the $15 tip in that last game. Thank you so much for the support, guys. Just wanted to catch up on those two shoutouts that I missed during the last game. Uh, base Trade, thank you so much for the big raid. Sorry, I'm not sure what ended up happening with Base Trade and why he had to go. Um, that does suck. Thank you so much for the love, Rifkin, as always. Uh, one of the most prolific content creators in the starcraft scene i do sometimes kind of feel like i should um <clears throat> somebody chat those were cringe <laughs> oh yeah this is because we all know it's the coolest people on the internet that always spam the word cringe they're always like oh that's cringe that's cringe and i'm like are we 14? Are we 14? Is everything cringe? They're like, uh, don't talk to me in public, dad. It's like they'll know that I was born from you. It's like, you were born from me, son. We have to go shopping to buy you something. And he's like, don't fucking stand near me, dad. You make me look uncool. You're so cringe, dad. Um, no worries. Just a bit of hate there. What can I say? Um, I do, I do like a little bit of cringe humor. Sometimes I do enjoy it. I can watch uh, a whole season of Seinfeld and, and somehow enjoy it. And that show, yeah, man, that oof, can get uncomfortable at times. Um, anyways, this could be the final game. So let's focus on it. Let's not get distracted by chat. Wanted to go out with a drone, but didn't send it in time. Reaper's going to come in. Wow, he's going to go straight up the ramp. He says, yeah. Are you mining out the back minerals? So we wanted to see if Clem, uh, sorry, if Namshar was mining out those back minerals. Clem hasn't started mining out his either, but it's quite common for a Terran <coughs> to start mining it out and then float your third down here. You've got a really easy area to defend there. Mine out these in the middle as well is very good. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm very happy that Namshar took this base. I really... Uh, was it Lambo versus Cure as well? I think where Lambo tried to take this third and then Cure just opened this up and just ran his Hellions in and burnt all the drones because all the defense was up here. I think it was the Lambo Cure series in TSL where that happened. And I, I, I looked at it because I was like, oh, that's a really clever third for Zerg. And then I saw Cure just destroy it. And I was like, that's a really abusable third for Zerg. <laughs> I had the like the immediate, oh, that's a cool way of expanding. Like that's a cool strategy. And then like the immediate, and this is why it can be shut down. And it's a bit dangerous sometimes. I'd love to hear Lambo's thoughts on if there is a an adjustment that can be made there. Um, with like just keeping your overlord over the, here to see which way the Hellions go and then you can like move and respond um, like you fully wall off this side and then keep your units down at that base or something I, I don't know exactly but uh we medevac on the way interesting so it looks like we're gonna see a Hellion drop uh, there could be an armory but no sign of that just yet so I think we'll just see a Hellion drop in the main and then maybe some Hellions run into the third or the natural at the same time Non-stop Hellion production. He's really been ramping up the Hellion production, hasn't he? A quick Baneling Nest here for Clem. Gonna add a bit of insurance here. He's not sure. Remember, he doesn't go Overlord speed. He comes in, he sees Stim upgrading. He sees the factory leaving the reactor. And he sees the starport building a reactor. Now this tells him, no BCs, no Banshees. No more Hellion production. <coughs> Where's the medevac? Ooh, even goes right along the high ground. 
to give them minimal chance of Namshar seeing us. We're going to go to Namshar's camera. How quickly does Namshar respond? He's going to spot it on the minimap in about three seconds. It entered vision. He's looking up here. The Hellions come in to pull his vision away. He still hasn't noticed. Oh, no. Namshar. Oh, no. He only looks at it now. Oh, great movement by Clem. It was just perfectly done. You notice how he just poked those Hellions in at the third, pulled Namshar's attention away at the perfect moment. Nine kills, and most importantly, keeps them alive. And look at that. Redropping down there. There's a lovely triangle you can abuse here with dropping in one area, picking up, going to another. And it's so hard to have vision across all of these, these ledges, right? That being said, Namshar is one of the, the big macro beasts in StarCraft 2 Zerg play. He can come back from this. He's, he's not put back on gas. He said, look, minerals are really important right now. I've got to just keep these three mineral lines saturated. Let's kick ass with that as much as we can. And, um, should be good. Got three barracks there. What do we got? Hellions, Reaper. What else we got? Okay, I was about to say, if he doesn't remember melee, this is going to get awkward because he'll just be a bit too far behind in the upgrades. Fourth and fifth barracks aren't down yet, but the third CC is flying out. The armory is actually even a little bit early there. Better early than late, though. Uh, Marines and tanks moving out to guard the third. And Clem not going to mine out the back door at all. He's just going to push along this gold base. I mean, where's your push path? I've seen so many people trying to push tanks down here. And it's kind of nice, but it's also not that amazing. If you push up here, I feel like you can get a really good siege tank position there and there and kind of branch forwards through this area this top side of the map there are some amazing ledges it's just so far away and kind of hard to get your army up here that i feel like you usually just do drops and run bys up there and your main push as we see here pushing straight down the middle but it's a very conservative push from clem he doesn't really have one one or all the pieces remember he committed to the medevac committed to quite a lot of hellions so this is more of like a poking pressure right now and he, he's just kind of using the tank almost as if it's four marines. Oh no. Distracts the Ling Bane. Namshar has not been on point with his minimap awareness. It's, even he's getting tired. It's late in Toronto. It's even later. I mean, it's, it's actually morning. I'm pretty sure the sun's probably coming up in France right now. Oh, nice redrop on the high ground. The Hellbats buy some mining time. Bane links, get him. So overall, it's just mining time. The medevac does go down there. Ooh, but loses a few queens as well. We'll get that tank, which is always nice. Pulls the banelings back, but ow, 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 ow. The marines turn and... Oh, Clem. Oh, Clem. Hugest Microus. For those who don't know, um, after Clem sniped uh, his 1,000th baneling with marine target fire on creep, and this is only counts speed banelings, of course, he did actually get a, a special award from the Terran community. Um, their chat, also known as the Salt Mine, it's a Discord community of pro Terran players. They said, you know what? You get an award. It's called Hugest Microus. And uh, yeah, he got a big, big medal and uh, a bag of salt to represent the, the hopes and dreams of the Terran community. And you can see him. He just doesn't stop micring. Clem's like, lol, put me on US US Central from France. I, I won't stop micring. I can dance all day. I'm FPS Clem. I could dance all day. Marines are going to elevate into the main base. Uh, the drone's pulling back there. There's a queen. 2-2. Two, two. The Zergling's coming forward. Oh, no. <laughs> There's like a bit of a choke point there. And he focus fires the Baneling because he's... A oh. I feel like sometimes when you're... <laughs> I, I think it's Tasteless who's used this uh, comparison before, but I feel like you're in a garbage compactor, right? He's just squishing you in bit by bit. He's just, just like, yep, you have... Up, 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 up. And it used, like, I don't know, man. Is Namshar finally going to catch him? No, Clem's so fast. That being said, his fourth base is established. Tutu's finishing up here in the main. Uh, production is up to five, six, seven, eight barracks kicking in. And Zerg's only on 73 drones and is stuck on Hydraling Bane. So I don't think we have a hive started. Infestation pit only now going down. If Namshar was on 80 drones plus, I'd be a bit more comfortable. I mean, his creep spread's great. Except on the bottom. It's shit down here. <laughs> but in the middle of the map, this is going to buy a lot of time. 
And this is not a map which Clem favors. Clem has raged when he's lost on this map. He'll even say, like, fuck this map in chat. He does not like this map. Remember, you only get one veto in a best of five. Seven maps in the map pool, only one veto. This is one of the later maps that got played in this series. And it's a big wide open area, but where's the Zerglings? It's mostly just Banes and Hydras. And if the Marines are spread, they've got tanks and mines guarding them. Banes and Hydras will not cut it. Namshaw wants a fifth base, but he just cannot secure this ground. Clem continuing to trade quite well here. Namshaw's going to try to just push him back off this base. These Widow Mines here. Pick out a few Zerglings. Nothing too impactful just yet, but oh no. Anytime Hydras have to stand and fight Marines, remember the Hydras do not get attack upgrades, guys. So it's 2-2 two, two Marines up against 0-2 Hydras. And the Marines are just a much cheaper unit. They do more damage than the Hydras per cost. And they can also gun down Banelings. So Namshar has found himself in this awkward position where he's constantly relying on Clem, overstepping on Creep to the point where the Hydras and the Banelings can punish him. Clem is not gifting him any of these opportunities. Okay, how can you force a good engage? Namshar showed it in the last game. Wrapping Zerglings around his army, backstabbing him with tons of Zergling Baneling. But because his economy hasn't been that high, this very first attempt at a Ling Bane run by is about the saddest thing a Zerg player has ever seen in their life. He gets a Hellbat. No, he doesn't even get one of the Hellbats. He gets like a few Marines, does nothing else. And Namshar is just getting pressed into his corner of the map. The Terran push from Clem. Terran's not only covering the map in bases, he's pushing in, denying Namshar's fifth, and just trading over and over again. We can look at the units lost in this game. A much bigger gap percentage-wise than in that previous map. Namshar has not been able to shut down these armies. There we go. A little pickup like that shuts down some of the pressure. But look at these tanks. Just absolute D-bag position there. Marines and Marauders coming forward. The Queens and Hydras doing what they can. I feel like those rocks have been destroyed just by Banelings coincidentally blowing up on them. The Lings come around. These Lings are what I was talking about in terms of efficiency. Pull the Widow Mines into their army and away from your own. Namshar with a lovely engagement. Oh, but he can't quite crack the back layer. He pulls back. I think he might have... No, there was too much bio coming forward. He did not have enough to keep going there. So a good choice to pull back. Still no hive. Ah, no, actually, sorry. He does have a hive. Correction. Still a hive. He's done nothing with it. He just can't afford it right now. If he takes a break to build a viper, what's it going to do? There's never that many tanks. It's a mix of bio mine tank. And I think this is such a good way to play against Hydra Ling Bane. You've got the mines to deal with the Ling Bane. You've got the tanks to deal with the Hydras. It's this awkward mix of units that the Zerg is not comfortable playing against. Oh, he's coming in from both sides. Here we go. And he is going to clear up all of the siege tanks. Marine Marauder pulling up the ramp. They want to defend this base. Look at that focus fire. But, oh, they get on top. A few of the Marines do go down. More Hydras and Queens coming forward. The Queens are way off creep. Clem, I think namshar has got to put it back in his pants. I don't think he can get rid of this base. He wants to, he wants to get the expansion. But I think, I think this is the point where you need to pull back and waistband trick it. You need to contain yourself. Oh, Namshar. Oh, he's gone too deep. The mule force field tries to go down again. Clem is going to stim down here. He wants to trap these expensive hydras and take them down. Widow mines are coming off cooldown and starting to fire again. The queens are caught off creep. Doesn't matter how many transfusions you've got. That's too much bio, mate. The baneling morph is done. And I think with that overstep, Namshar may have been able to get back in this game if he just kind of settled down, spread creep, and tried to hold on to the middle. But he knew he was still going to be behind even after that good fight he took. And he was like, man, let's just, if I can snap this base, I'll actually have a bit of momentum in this series. I don't think he felt good looking down the gun of another 10 minutes of trying to drag his way back into the game, similar to some of the nightshade engagements. Good little run by. We'll get a few SCVs. Sumling's going to run up there as well. That is a planetary though. You're not going to be able to take that out. I love the micro. Clem actually saves a bunch of SCVs in the corner. Baneling's going to roll into that mineral line. It's not very saturated, so it's not going to find too much. Remember, these Hydras still no attack upgrades. Not going to be too effective against the Bio, which now has 3-3 versus 2-2 two, two upgrades. The 3-3 three, three of the Zerg on the way. A few Vipers coming out. Namshar adding some efficiency. Banelings roll in. Planetary says, get the fuck out of here, you little Baneling bastards. This Planetary also says, no, the last Baneling left alone in a Zerg circle of loneliness. Thankfully, another few Banelings did get in. They got three SCVs, a bunch more wounded. Not finding the damage he wants. Namshar desperately wants to pull Clem away from the front. Hasn't been able to pull it off just yet. Okay. Pulls back from this one. 
Man, the Widowmind spread is so methodical. Clem never seems to clump his mines up. It's mine, mine, mine. He just sets them up in a straight line. Because when the fight happens... Where'd that Widowmind go off? What just happened? I heard a Widowmind blow up. I don't know where. Who knows? Um, he knows he's going to kite backwards. So he just sets them back in a straight line almost. And uh, even sets one right up front here. That was too close. It will shoot the lava and eggs. Ling Bane coming in from all sides. There's not many Zerglings though. So these Banelings will find the mark on the Banelings. Luckily only a few Banelings that were spread out. The Banelings get through onto the Marauders. But now it's Hydras versus Bio. And every Marauder has their own personal medevac. This here is no longer the wasteful Terran military with no health care and no armor vests. These guys not only have sick power armor, they have a goddamn personal medevac healing them in the middle of combat. This is about the best Terran military you could sign up for. This is some elite shit right here. This is not some pleb conscript stuff. And uh, you can see the results of it. A Terran who takes care of his bio reaps the rewards. Taking a look, look at that unit's lost tab again up in the top left. 8,000 resources difference. As I said, I'm much more used to seeing Clem getting close to a 30% uh, cost efficiency advantage. It's, a, it's not uncommon for him to get close to that 30 Sometimes even 35-40% uh, extra efficiency over his opponent. And he does find it here in this game, keeping Namshar on the back foot. I mean, Namshar is taking a punch. We were talking about Clem's chin and how well he held up and survived in that last game, even though he did end up losing. He scans and sees the gold base and the bottom base have been taken. I think Clem senses he might be tunnel visioning on this one push path. But I mean, he's still maxed out and he's being so efficient. So... As long as you're taking good trades, is it is it really bad? No. It's just, could he send a Liberator down the bottom or a drop? Yes, that would seal the deal. Oh, he's going to siege the Libs. So good with this Micro, man. I love this Lib just facing that way. Two of them are facing the wrong direction. It's a lot of things to Micro at once. But it's just Hydras. Naked Hydras with plus three armor. They do have plus one attack now, but it's a little bit late. Did not get here in time. A few medevacs go down. That turns into what looks like a decent fight for Namshar, but he just does not have the economy, does not have the support to back it up. He is desperately trying to hang on for his life. Never even squeezed out Adrenal. All of his Vipers went down. And Clem here keeps scanning and is like, okay, you have other bases. Here's some bio. Do -do 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 -do. Oh, he's just going to go drop behind the minerals. He's like, hey, have fun trying to defend here, mate. Also, I'm still pushing here. Damn, Shah's like, okay, this is just a little bit too much, mate. You can hear him gurgling, unfortunately, uh, drowning in his own fluids right now. The Ling's got to the other side that he picks up and drops over here. He's like, I'm over here now, man. This is a tiring game. Namshaw is not the sort of player to leave a game like this, but I do wonder if it tires him out. So I feel like Clem has a, a big old Terran, uh, you know, happy right now. He's just smiling. He's like, yeah, yeah, it's really late. Yeah, I'm tired. Yeah, I have to micro. I mean, it's, it's much later for Clem, so maybe it's worth staying in the game just to tire Clem, Clem out. Lings do find the backstab again. Push forward on the front. Hydras and Banes are like, take it. The Banelings get some good hits, man. The single Hydra is like, oh, okay, let's leave. Ah. Double Lib on that top base. Of course, Libs cannot attack buildings. Man, I love these just random fucking... It's just tanks and mines. I think it's three factories, right? It is indeed. Two tech lab, one reactor. Yeah, two tech lab, one reactor. Such a sick setup. I love this. Just double tank production, but also double mine production. As a Zerg, like, yeah, is that hard to micro? Yes. Would I do it? No. Because I'd get too confused. It's too complicated. But man, you look at that as a Zerg, and you're like, this is really annoying to fight into. It's really frustrating. How is Namshar still alive? Is Zerg OP? I'm just like bouncing between his Terran overpowered or his Zerg overpowered. Newsflash, the players might actually be pro gamers who are pretty good at the game pig. 
I don't even have anything to say anymore. This is just, just non-stop fighting. At no point has Namshar looked like he's back in this game, though. <coughs> Maybe after he held in the middle and counter-attacked into the planetary. It's the one moment. One last desperate attempt to break out washes up like waves upon the rocky shore of Terran. The Liberators, the tanks, the mines, the wall of marauders, the medevacs bruised but not taken down, and a few low hit point hydras remain. It is not enough. Namshar here, fighting for his life for a solid 21 minutes. What a series we've got here in this grand finals. And it's absolutely fitting that Clem takes down that game, dominates Golden Wall and takes us to map five. Holy shit. Chat has an update. It is now 7 a.m. in fact, in France, guys. 7 a.m. Dude, I've been live for eight hours. I, I got up. I thought I had coaching. My student got confused about times. So he played for two hours. Played for an hour in the tournament until I got eliminated. So I've been casting for six hours, which means this tournament's been going for like seven hours. God damn. Six hours. Six hours. Three plus three plus three. Six over six hours now. Guys, we've got a game five. And I think honestly, I'm exhausted after watching these games. I am exhausted. How how the hell do you think the players feel? Clem has stayed up all night to play this tournament. In Toronto, what time is it in Toronto right now? Um, East Coast, so what, 5 plus 8? It's 1 a.m.? I think it's 1 a.m. in Toronto. East Coast, U.S., Canada right now. Um, so it's, it's getting late for Namshar. But, uh... You two are insane men. Gladiators. Warriors. Legends. Who fight for glory. And now eternal respect and an undying loyalty you two are gods amongst mere men whoever stands triumphant is a hero but no less the second place you are both heroes you have my respect good luck have fun i've just typed that in chat to the players Clem responds with a uh, a line, full stop, line face, hyphen, full stop face, and it says, I'm dying, I'm dying, go, go. I think Clem's rather tired, guys. <laughs> Clem just says, uh, Namja just says, good luck, have fun, go, go. Chicken Man and a few others were doing salute emotes to my little speech there. But come on, they deserve, they deserve a speech. Going into map number five here. I'm so happy we got such a sick series here. I'm too lazy to fix my green screen. I know there's some weird white lights behind me. <laughs> this is actually insane. What's the link for ladder, says Powered by Kiank. No idea what that means. Guys, we are going into map number five. I cannot bloody believe it. <coughs> my voice is ruined. I'm tired, I'm hungry, <laughs> but these players fight for our entertainment. They stand here in the gladiatorial arena and they fight for us and let's bloody enjoy it. This could be a quick game five. It could be sudden. The players are exhausted at this point. They're both stumbling around the arena. There's blood dripping from their many wounds. And honestly, it, it could just be one quick thrust into the opponent's kidneys. You know, there's many ways this could end. Don't be surprised if this last one is quick and brutal. Spawning up here in the top left-hand side, representing Team Liquid, the Blue Terran. Up here in the top right of Zen, he is Clem. 
And down here in the bottom left hand side, in the red, the Zerg player, a man who has fought so hard to disrupt this Terran monstrosity. I think he's superseded my expectations to give me an, an all new level of respect for how profoundly good he is at this game. Representing Infinity Gaming, it is Namshar. And he's looking everywhere around the left for proxy barracks. Clem, though, not going to risk it on that. I can't believe this is a weekly American EPT cup, guys. It's actually insane. Even Dot's dropped in chat. She says, wow, poor Jared. Poor me. Poor the players. It's 7 a.m. in France, and Clem is just still playing. Hundreds of APM, lightning fast. And Namshar is making him bleed for it. Even in that last game where he was ahead for like 50 supply, it took 10 more minutes to finish Namshar. Namshar just kept fighting. It's like a rabid dog, you know? It's like that. It's like fighting someone on ice. She says, I can hear your pain from here. I'm sorry, Dot. Just totally disturbing her workflow. That's why she's in Twitch chat. The Reaper comes in. All right. comes in. No kills yet. Good micro from the Char. Uh-oh. Gets one. Can it get a second? Ooh, wants a second. Three lings, low on life. Queen says, leave! Those are my children! Um, Come on. P puts it down. Yeah, Reaper's wounded enough. Won't be able to get that. Alright. Engineering bay block. Uh, So. Yeah, so there's a queen blocking the rotate, but the reaper goes to the main. Says, you've got a queen there. You've got a queen and lings here. I'm going to run in here and try to kill a drone. Namshar knows, so the queen is positioned between the two bases and was expecting it. There's no way Namshar responds that quickly unless he was expecting it. Namshar with a good prep there. Wriggles right through the mineral line. Oh man, the third base still doesn't start. You're going to get a drone over there, Namshar. Oh, the reaper gets out. That's tilting. There's something about that Reaper running a uh, full ring around the rosy there and getting out that it triggers you. Oh, he's going no third base. Oh, so I think he was saying, hey, I'm going to play two base. I mean, I didn't realize he'd been mining gas the whole time. He says, you know, what? let's just play like a two base muter. It's lair before third base. So this can be a very nice opening. The Hellions and the Reaper are going to come in and seeing that hatch timing will make them realize. But he, he's not even looking for it because you just kind of you saw the gas was still mining. He should be looking for that third base timing. Just to, just to double check. I mean, it's a solid opening from Clem, but he really... Yeah. He sees that third, and that immediately is, is going to make you aware. There's some cheeky bullshit coming your way. Now, in this case, it's, it's the more standard cheeky bullshit. It's just get a spire, get muters, get control of the map, right? Baneling that's there. Reapers and aliens come forward. They can bruise it, but they will not kill it. Queens can easily move over and defend from behind it. These queens, of course, now have the luxury of defending a single angle. Makes it very easy to defend the Hellions on this map. But Banshee's coming across as well. Overlord comes through. Sees that there is Cloaked Banshee. Sees the factory lifting off after just six Hellions. So it's not going to be like a crazy flow of non-stop Hellions. CC down in the wall. So Command Center. It's going to go up to that third base. Uh, definitely straight into second and third barracks. It looks like a very normal follow-up. No real change in the build order from Clem. It's about as standard as standard can be, and I think that's totally fine. I think the Banshee should give some more scouting and information about what's going on. Um, why is there only one queen up the front, though? Those Hellions could dart in. Why are we bringing four queens back for a single Banshee? Namshar. Okay, good. Those queens go back to the front. That's very important. The Banshee's just hanging. Namshar would love to kill the, kill the Banshee. Not going to be able to get it. Bane speed starts immediately. Oh, I think Namshar might do a timing. So that's such a quick bane speed. It could just be preparing a bit ahead of time. But because it's so fast, I, part of me wonders if if he does like a 50 drone, just Ling Bane muter timing. Get eight muters out, shut down the Banshees, shut down the Terran's vision, make a bunch of speed banes. And as the Terran moves out to take a third, just YOLO in with it. Like the muters try to pull the Marines to a bad position. And then your Ling Bane just rolls in and tries to catch him out of position and hopefully bust. Now, that's just an option. Bane speed's, of course, very good for stopping the Terran pressures as well. This seemed like it was so high on the priority list that it was a bit ahead of time for that. We'll see exactly what the option is. The Banshee not getting any big damage yet. 
Both Banshees still alive. The Mutas are not hanging around. They're like, dude, we don't care about your stupid Banshees. We're going across the map. I would always, always keep a Muta at least at home with the Overseer to get rid of the Banshees. But Namshar trusts his multitasking. He knows he can handle it with the Queens and the Spores. And that's an open mineral line. I don't think Namshar realized what he was up against here. Oh no. Oh, he's going to lose at least a few SCVs. The Metavax can help heal. Mm, three. Oh, those are high value SCVs. The ones that are building the barracks. So he slows the barracks down. The Muta's going to start to rotate. Uh, that third base is wide open. There's even fresh mules there. And uh, much like Pudge, when he gets some fresh meat on the end of his hook, when a Muta finds a fresh mule, it does get very excited. Uh, the Reddit point Muta, of course, rotating to what is now the back of the pack. Oh, no! Oh, my God. He's actually baited quite a lot of stems out. Seven SCV kills. This is a brilliant start for Namshaw. Takes the lead. Fourth base on the way. Creep spread spreading in all directions. Does need to put some new tumors down here. You can see they've just been queued up from those queens. Right now, there is only five queens. You do not have as many queens with this style. But even with the delayed upgrades and so on, we are going to catch up. All that economic damage, the muters running circles delayed the armory. So even though 1-1's done, that armory being delayed slows down the 2-2. Two -two. So you've got not only the worker advantage for Napshar, uh, you've got the muter control, and you do end up kind of interrupting that upgrade lead, which the Terran might otherwise have. And he's still going to be eager to push right now with just two Widow Mines, a pack of Marines, and a tank. He wants to slow down the creep spread. He knows he can't give map control to the Zerg for too long. Or it's a recipe for disaster. Two Widow Mines go down. Oh man. These Muta's doing big damage right now. With this much damage going down, you, you even maybe could lose your fourth base without it being too disastrous. Oh, the Speed Banes are done. The Muta's here finding some damage. He's going to go for the turret. Does end up pulling back. Disrupts the mining though. Forces them to repair. Now the Queens could tank against the Siege Tank. But Clem's very quick at focus firing and changing targets. The muters get in here. They once again are catching these barracks and trying to delay them. I think Namshar may be willing to give up that base. He realizes he's doing so much damage on this production. He's going to pull home and try to catch this army. I, I really like that call. Scan sees there's no other hatcheries down. And I think at this point, Clem realizes he's got to get home. He's on three base first. Three base. Namshar does not have a lot of sustain in this army. Uh, in this economy, sorry. But if Namshar can catch his army, that's where he ends up in trouble. Oh, big mines, big mines. Holy shit. God damn, I almost fell out of my chair in fear. That was a lot of Zerglings just going down there. A sloppy maneuver from Namshar. About equal in the units lost on both sides, but three bases is not where you want to be. If he loses this hatch as well, that one's only just started. He's got to get his fourth base mining. I mean, the muters are finding damage, so it might be okay once again. Is he going to go for the add-ons? Yes, he is. Cues up some attacks on the reactors. Cancels that base. I like the way he's giving up ground here. I think this is just great play from Namshar. Taking out the Widow Mines as they pop. Clem's really not achieving much on the other side of the map right now. Uh, he's trying to stim some Marines back. Does get one or two muters. Muta's going to pull back for now. The Link Bank goes in! Woo! Oh no, that Widow Mine does hit the Banelings in a big way. The Ling Bane going after the Marines. They've had to stim many times. The Mutas will be able to clear this up, but... I mean, Clem. Who, who the fuck keeps any Marines alive after that sort of fight? Clem, that's who. Clem's the guy. He's the man. He'll somehow micro right when it seems like everything's gone. And that's actually very crucial because Namsha does not have a fourth base mining. He's making 2-2, two -two, but it's just started. Guess what? 2-2 two is about to finish. Namsha is behind in this game, guys. He's got to get a lot more damage done with these Mutalisks. He cannot just sit and rest. If he can delay that factory any longer on the tech lab, that's going to delay drilling claws, which is a very important upgrade. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing a Ling run by on this third at some point as well. Feels like that's being ignored at the moment. 63 drones only, no fifth hatch on the way. I feel like Namshar might be getting a bit too stiff in his play. He's not really going YOLO on the run buys and hitting the mineral lines that hard. He's doing a great job with the muters, but I think he needs to squeeze a big fat round of drones out or spread the creep a bit more aggressively. But you know, he's down to three queens. He's not really spreading his creep very well. He doesn't have that many active tumors. He's rebuilding a queen now, realizing that he's low on, on lava. But I mean, he doesn't even, actually he's got plenty of lava. He's so low on money. That, the lack of queens injecting hatcheries doesn't even matter. Navshar's economy, very low. He's playing very heavy on the units, and this is a valid way to place Dark Revenge. Is, is Clem faking it? 
or is this a mistake? Is Clem faking a drop? I feel like this is a mistake. He sent a whole bunch of empty medevacs over there. His army's all here. He's trying to establish a fourth base. Namshar's going to do a bust, but he's got to wait for 2-2. Two, two. Oh, no! More big widow mine hits! Not again! You can't afford that, Nams! You're all in, mate! You've got to do a big old bust now. He's going to try and bust this wall, but look, I feel like Clem knows the situation he's in. Yeah, he keeps scanning. He keeps scanning. Oh, Clem's got him pegged. Clem's got him pegged. He says, you know what? I, you don't have a fifth base. Your fourth isn't even fully saturated. Clem keeps realizing that's only 10 drones on the fourth. He keeps doing the scan right between both bases and identifying that neither has been taken. And this tells Clem all he needs to know. It's, you've got a crazy amount of units and a shitty economy. All I got to do is defend survive take some good fights as long as i don't get overwhelmed here i will be able to hold namsha collapsing on this base he's going to come in from the right hand side and the left at the same time the lings running in the army from the right quickly trying to get over here to reinforce the scvs are trying to get out of there the banelings say nah -uh. take out 15 scvs the muters have to take out that fourth command center that is the minimum that namsha needs here he will get it 15 scvs and a command center he keeps himself alive in this game, but that is by no means a killing blow. The Terran is still dropping orbitals off, uh, mules off three orbitals, equal work account, and he's up 10 army supply. The upgrades are even right now, but three threes on the way with plus three weapons, not far out at all. Clem may be getting over eager here with this counter attack. It's an opportunistic strike. The queen is going to take the widow mine on the face. She takes one for the team. He's going to float down his main command center to the fourth base. Namshah staying active. A big old Ling line, Conga line, just sneaking through the minerals in the middle. Sees that Clem's reacted, pulls back, but even that Widow Mine does end up taxing him a little bit there. Force on the left hand side of the map. Namshah's economy, it's small, it's bruised. He's starting 3 3 and adrenal glands. He's going to get the upgrades for the late game efficiency. Clem is tired. He's not quite as systematic at shutting down these bases, but it really feels like Namshah also has run out of steam in this series here on Zen. A map which he probably doesn't play all that often. It feels like he's just been stuck on a low economy count. It's a nice choice to try to just overwhelm and crush Clem's uh, signature over aggression. It's not working out though. Clem keeps scanning. Clem keeps scouting and shifting gears. And only after he holds the big attack does he swap back into non-stop attacking parade pushing Clem mode. So look at this. Takes out the fourth. He's isolated the fifth. He says, dude, you're back on your original three bases. Get wrecked. The Mutas come in, they focus on the Missile Turret and the Mineral Line, since that's the one that could get mass repaired more easily. He's going to take out a bunch of SCVs. I mean, these Mutas all game long have done big damage. Is it enough? I don't think so. Going to catch some Thors and Marines. There's still one Widow Mine on the left. A few good Baneling hits do end up going down. The Mutas get on top of the production. Take out a Lib there. They're doing some nice moves. I mean, Namshar... I feel like his ability to... Oh my god, that Widow Mine! To handle these Ling Bane fights all over the map. I think they're so amazing. But we're at the point where there's 21 Widow Mines just spread across this map. I don't know if you win that without Ultras or Broodlords or something, right? Like maybe Hydras and Overseers to clear them up. But like with Ling Bane Muta, you're just never going to get through that many Widow Mines. And Clem never F2s and unseages them all and runs them in a clump and gets them killed by Banelings. He's just like, no, no, we'll just like leave this field of broken zerg dreams you know some people talk about the field of dreams enabling people to like live out their fucking wildest dreams and you know their their motivations and things and everything that they live for well clem likes to do the opposite of that for zerg players where he's like do you think you're gonna win you think you're gonna run through this open field and it's kind of like the whole you know person running through a field of rakes and each one they step on flips up and hits them in the face case in point um, but instead, you're actually ruining the Zerg's hopes and dreams of victory, and you're making them incredibly sad. Widowmine run by up here as well. Um, Widowmine's in the main. I mean, <sighs> winner, winner, Widowmine dinner. I think that's what we're looking at here in the tail stage of this game five. Namshart down 50 supply. He's trying to hang in there. Clem is tired. He literally said, I am dying in the pre-game chat. He said, I'm dying. That's his words. He's so tired. So is Namshar. Both of them have played a grueling series with so much adrenaline pumping through their veins, so much on the line. Uh, not a time for random lag to kick in. Battle.net. I definitely saw that.
Ooh, steadfast. Oh no. Guys, this is insane. Um, last shout out. If you guys are enjoying the stream, thank you very much for the support. If you guys didn't know, you can actually stick your money in Jeff Bezos' pocket. Hand out a few coins to the favorite streamer of your choice. There's a thing called Amazon Prime, which most of you have. And you may not know if you're new to Twitch, but that actually gives you a Twitch Prime subscription. All you need to do is make a Twitch account and link your Amazon account to your Twitch account. It means you can give out one free Twitch Prime sub each month. And that actually gives direct dollars, cash money, to the streamer of your choice. It is much appreciated. We've had a bunch of brand new Twitch Prime subs, as well as those who go above and beyond, dip into their own pocket and say, you know what, I will tip you. I enjoy this content. I pay for my Netflix subscription. And so thus, I shall also pay for my Twitch streams. Whether or not you can afford to or not doesn't matter if you do or don't. Obviously, just being part of the community, enjoying the games is part of it. So much love for everyone who does go above and beyond. But uh, just a big thank you to those who do that. Big thanks to Amazon, of course, and, and Bezos with the uh, <laughs> the Bezos charity fund. We call it that for a reason. He, he gives uh, gives streamers money, which is kind of nice. So thank you, everybody, for the support today. It's been amazing. Big thanks to Undefied Behavior. You just gifted a sub to me. A lovely lady Dot is working from home in the other room and is probably at the end of her tether at how loud I am shouting. She's like, ah, oh, it's kind of annoying when he casts this day because he gets very loud, but... Oh, god damn. But at least it normally quietens down about three hours ago. Uh, today is running very late, though. The games are epic and they are well-deserving. So thank you very much for the support, fam. Phil Harmonic with the 11-month resub and on the tanks with the Twitch Prime sub. So guys, Napshire is tucked back in and is now saying, oh shit, you got a 5th planetary and a 6th and 7th command center there? Oh no. He's trying to take the fight seek and he got 3-3 three, three ultras out, which is cute. But that's exactly how Clem would describe this Zerg army. Cute. Notice how the bio spreads back a big old arc. There's no banelings in there. And uh, whilst he does end up pulling back a little bit, he's got other bio coming in from the left hand side that's going to sandwich this. Oh wait. Oh, that's that sad moment where you're looking forward to that beautiful Ultralisk sandwich and you didn't put enough Ultralisk on the sandwich. It's like, you guys ever had someone make you a peanut butter sandwich and there is like, not even a spread, a smear of peanut butter. That's what those Ultralisks were between that bio toast, um, or bio bread, I guess I should say. Who the, who the fuck does a closed toasted peanut butter sandwich? That's crazy. I guess that's what you have to do with Ultralisks though. Clem, you absolute monster. What the hell? Steadfast's PC actually just crashed because that series was too epic. Clem. My man. My man. Down one, two. Wins two games in a row. Closes it out. Wins the best of five. And um, good fucking shit, man. That's incredible. That's actually incredible. Uh, Clem is your American French champion? For this week, it is, of course, the EPT Weekly number 20. Uh, and we do try to put up the best series from this tournament on YouTube. So if you're watching live, don't forget to follow the YouTube channel. If you guys are watching on YouTube, want to go the extra mile to support, Patreon info is down below. Much love, those of you who are supporting. Uh, thanks for watching that series. I am going to go and um, just sit and stare at a blank wall and contemplate how epic the last couple of hours of my life was casting that finals. I'm going to tell the players in my chat, in the chat, I'm going to say, you are both gods. GG, well played, guys. Incredible. GG, well played.